Hello and welcome Pixels! Today it will be a special video because I will just talk to my time lapse um, work what I have done in the last couple of days because I was working on several projects and I will just start this now. I will talk about my painting experience in Blender 2.8 and what was maybe new or what was a good experience or a bad experience um, and that I have done several objects now in painting in Blender 2.8 um, before I was just creating my my textures in Photoshop and yeah it was a little bit hard to just um, create seamless textures for props or for characters or for whatever um, and the tool the 3d painting tool in blender is really really nice and I really love to to hide UV seams um, if you watched our videos of the several of the past few weeks then you know that I baked a texture and I create and worked with um, seamless textures and for example here you see that we have this wood pattern and this wood pattern was an old seamless texture um, and we just placed the UV so that the texture looks nice and sharp and and what you see here now is we um, painting details to this um, to this texture now because we baked it and we brought all the UVs to uh, our UV uh, space so that it fits to a texture space and now we creating details and I love to have already a, a working pattern and so you don't have to uh, consider all the 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 wood pattern or maybe the iron pattern again because you have done this one time and you don't have to do this another time so you can and it is a well very important to to get a similar feeling for all your props you are creating maybe you're creating a an barrel or maybe you're creating uh, any kind of of houses or um, town elements then you can then can you work with this uh, tile level textures and they helped me so much for all our props we created so far and the good thing is we have this wood pattern and now we can add as many details as we wanna because we have a high resolution um, baked map and and basically the wood pattern was pretty small so it was about 256 um, it was about 256 pixels and now we have this 4k texture so seamless is very cool um, to talk about the 3d painting tool in blender I need to say that it is it is good but it is not the best tool I guess so for sure blender 2.8 is now um, is released now and and they reworked everything and it is completely different at 2.79 but but it's still not a good 2d painting software for sure it's not 2d it is 3d but um i don't like the brush strokes in blender 2.8 and i don't like the brush strokes in 2.79 as well and i thought maybe they will change this because um it wasn't the best stroke at all but they didn't and so um, i think there are for sure better solutions for 3d painting software but Blender is free, and if you are work, uh, if you want to get a, a cheap program or a cheap software where you can create your game, then Blender will be probably the best software. Um, so, but you see that I'm switching between Photoshop and and Blender, um, and I bought this the software for Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, because I was working in school with Photoshop and I really loved 
um, I really love to work with it. And I tried Krita, for example, it's as well as free software. Um, but I think Photoshop is such mm, such better software uh, than Krita, for example. Um, and in my opinion, you have so many more features and possibilities to adjust your textures than in Krita. But maybe this is only my my thoughts because I was working much more in Photoshop than in Krita. Anyway, so um, what you see now is I'm I'm adding rope structure to um, to my hay cut and this wasn't possible before because yeah it was a seamless texture and now we're creating the details to this and um, now I can mark where the rope should be and later in Photoshop I can I can mm, bring those rope patterns to uh to my signs to my marked um to my marked places and it is is sometimes not easy because we need to switch between blender and photoshop sorry it's a little bit hot in here <laughs> um and uh, this is maybe confusing because um you have layers in photoshop and you can work with as many layers as you wanna and you can disable and enable them anyway but in in blender you just work with one image or with one layer and there is no other point to add more layers maybe there are more but currently i don't know so we need to stop here for a short time because this is now a very interesting um, step in development and this was as well the first time in blender 2.8 that i did this in this program now in this software so we prepared our texture so far so that we get the rope patterns to our to our prop but and now it is time to bring the rope pattern to our marked elements and this isn't easy to make this in photoshop because um yeah you have to adjust as well everything and there are so many uv cuts and it is pretty hard to bring um a pattern or a, a special pattern to around your UVs or around your faces because you have this flat image and you have to start on the left side and have to come out at the right side as well so that they are getting a circle so they are, that you don't see uh, the UV seam and this is pretty important and um, this you see here that we are still in in painting mode texture painting mode and I wasn't sure how this was working in 2.8 but you have the option to to load and texture and for example this rope part here and this rope part should be painted to our 3d object I wasn't sure yeah you see you can take this part of texture and you have this um, this ghost uh, preview and then you can paint on this 3D mesh with your brush and you paint this this pattern to your 3D object and this is pretty handy so um, for sure it is not perfect so far because you can't make uh, round shapes or anything like this so you can just um, paint this flat rope part here and and this is just to get over the seams so that we can start um, to set the basic rope shape and now you see that I uh, switch back to my brush and I can mm, adjust everything and need to um, and correct the form or the shape again of this rope and this is very handy in, in Blender but later I switch back as well to um, to Photoshop because 
I like or I prefer the brush in Photoshop more. So the the brush is not it hasn't a brush sensitivity in Blender, and there's the difference in Photoshop. So if you if you watched my previous videos, I was talking about this topic uh, as well, but. Um, you you know you have in in Blender you have the brush sensitivity that to to opacity. So you if you if you press to your tablet very softly, then you get a opacity about maybe fifty percent or as as you adjust your settings, um, maybe twenty percent opacity of your brush stroke. But it isn't the thickness of the brush itself. So it isn't a small dot. And if you press harder, then the dot will get bigger. And this isn't uh, this isn't in Blender. And I have this uh, this brush sensitivity in Photoshop. And this is the reason why I prefer Photoshop more than Blender uh, for some details, for sure. Because UV seems is the best the best solution uh, to to hide them in Blender. So the whole process creating this 3D prop where was very time consuming. It took uh, a couple of hours to create this texture, even though we baked the texture from seamless textures. So yeah, we spared some time to bake the texture to, to a unique one. But all these little tiny details and and all these um, add-ons of the rope, for example, this is as well very time-consuming and hides the the UVs, creating highlights or creating depth lines or whatever. Um, this is very time-consuming and basically, maybe you can say okay. We assigned a basic texture to it and it is seamless and it is okay because there isn't a huge difference from this version to the version before without any uh, texture paintings. But maybe I'm a little bit in love with creating details to props and this is maybe as well the point why I, uh, I need so much more time to creating the texture. I don't know. Maybe this is because I, I'm a graphic designer and I worked a lot to the details in my concept sometimes. Um, and But I learned as well to um, to spare some time by try to keep it simple. Um, but those little details was hiding the UV seams so that you don't recognize oh okay here's the UV cut and this is very important for me in my opinion because if I play the game and as in the if I see the UVs or the seams then uh, I would mark this game maybe as not so high quality and I like to have a whole working object and it is nice to look at it in the game and yeah, the hay cut is probably a very huge prop and it will definitely be um, good visible in the game later when I when I import this to Unity. Um, so this is the reason why I, I put so much time in it. I just wanted to talk a little bit about textures. It is it is so time consuming and I need to creating I need to create a time lapse for this because it is so much time and I can't make it uncut because <laughs> uh, it is maybe boring to watch. But it is important to point this out that hand painted textures take as well several time, even though this is tuned graphic. So for sure there's um, there's a better way or an easier way to creating tune textures, but we have a specific style and we need to keep inside of this style guide. And yeah, <laughs> we have chosen this style and yeah, this is different than completely tuned graphic. 
and realistic graphic and it's a mixture and the high card tutorial is finished now I will create in in hay mm, prop as well so this will be this hay square I don't know the English word for this now um, but anyway I'm talking to a little bit too much so so thank you very much for watching and and I hope this video was informative in any kind of way and I wish you a nice day so till the next time cheers